Okay, so the first thing, once you have your drawing done, you're going to see me. I'm going to put it in the grade book. And then you're going to come up to the front counter and you're going to get one of these. It's basically a cheap little dollar store bowl and we're going to use it upside down. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is put a little plastic on it. Yes, these are plastic. Um, I've tried putting them straight on the plastic. Sometimes these stick, so this is just an insurance policy just in case. So all you want to do is put a little plastic wrap around the actual bowl itself. Okay, set it to the side. Then, like a cooking show, <laughs> um, you get your clay. And the clay that I had my TA make back there um, is for slabs, okay? You're probably going to need about this much clay, and you're going to need something called a slab stick. Slab sticks are quarter inch. How do I know they're quarter inch? Because they have a green end. Slab sticks are located right there um, on the top shelf. So you're going to need slab sticks, you're going to need a large rolling pin, and clay. So the next thing you want to do is you want to work smarter, not harder. And you want to let this sort of flatten itself out. You need quite a bit of clay. If you throw it sometimes at an angle, it'll start to flatten out even more. I flatten these out quite a bit before I ever use a rolling pin because we want to get these about a quarter inch. Notice that I keep flipping it and it's kind of like making a pizza okay it gets smaller and smaller once you get it to a place where you think it is flat enough then I would start using the rolling pin and you still have to pick it up try not to rip it real carefully and continue to roll it flat now the slab sticks are going to get it to quarter inch. Once you slab this big it gets a little bit difficult to flip it, but not that difficult. Notice that my clay isn't really sticking to this all that much because it's it's, it's on the drier side. Okay, if you get to about this point, you really only need a little bit of overlap. Okay, so I've, I've got plenty of clay here, I can probably cut some of this off. So what I'm going to do is I'll size it. And you don't really need this. But once you have your project laid, or your, your piece of clay pretty, pretty thin, this is still a little bit thick, all I do is I just take it and I drop it on top. And then I push it down. Okay? All you want to have is you want to have your project kind of all the way down to the bottom. Now I did miss a spot right here. Now I can repair that make this one better. Uh, by doing one thing. I can, I can take my rib and I can move some of my clay and I can get it nice and on top of this particular form. What this is, is it's called a slope mold. Can somebody hand me a uh, Squirt, squirt bottle, the end one on this side has water in it. Thanks. Sometimes if you feel that your project isn't wet enough or isn't smoothing out, you can always do that. And then come back and just smooth it. Now, you're probably going to be cutting out quite a bit on this thing. But let's say I did this and I accidentally got this mistake. Take a little bit of clay. It's clay. Patch it. At this point, it's not really all that important because it hasn't become a thing yet. Once I have the basic form, then I'm going to come around and I'm going to trim. And I'm not going to get too close to it. 
just in case. I don't want to cut extra off. But you should have clay that goes all the way to the edge of your form. Then I would smooth it and you should be able to pick it up, okay, because it's got a form on it. And some of this, I could probably still get rid of some of it. You don't want it overlapping though, and you don't want your plastic stuck in there. So double check your plastic on the back before you start building on this thing. We actually leave this on this form for a couple of days while we build on it. Otherwise, it's not stiff enough to stand up as a mask, okay? So that's pretty much what it looks like on the back. What you would do then is you would smooth this, just like a cooking show. <coughs> we have another one that I smoothed. And then I would come here and I would use that template as a guide. So about a third of the way down are my eyes, right? And I'm going to put two basic lines. One about a third of the way down for my eyes and one down the center so I know where my nose goes unless you have a monster or a person or something that has a crooked face. Then you're going to have to talk to me about it. Okay? To cut your eyes, you can use either a needle tool or an X-Acto knife, and those are up in the X-Acto knife um, bin up next to the desk. I just usually draw on my clay first. Now, if you know that you have eyes, oh, that one's kind of small. If you know what kind of eyes you have or want, you can cut them out now. Um, and then I would start adding to this, okay? So basically, it's going to be like that. All right? Questions on this? It's pretty easy once you get the, the clay flattened down, rolled out, and on here. That's probably going to take you a class period. All right? Questions? All right, you can shut that off.